Okay, this is just a reason at four, but let's uh, consider some real reasons why we need loose notation. Uh, this uh, example goes back to our first example. So we have the raw data, and we are just not able to uh, analyze some visually in a way because it's a lot of us. But we are able to visualize and see and aware about millions of pixels at once. So we can use the human perception system. This is a simple one. Maybe we can find another one. Um, the so-called automatic approaches hardly are aware about the context. They do know nothing about your domain, about your biology, biology, biology data, and uh, or your other data. Um, and this means, for instance, we can here have a certain automatic approach, let's say clustering, just one approach with a certain parameterization, and we get um, here this clustering result. Here are some nice clusters, compact, non compact, <coughs> outliers, okay. Because the cluster is not able to be aware of the context, you can also apply a different clustering and get a different result. So the question is, which of our these two clustering results are <coughs> better to our domain. It's nothing that the that the uh, automatic process is able to decide. That when you need a human being to take a look, which makes more sense with respect to your domain. This is important here. And maybe, just maybe, uh, it makes totally no sense to use a clustering approach here because the context is quite different. Context is important. And this is another motivation um, why visualization approaches should be used, could be used in order to analyze data. Uh, the next thing is pretty interesting. So the data processing inequality. Data processing inequality it means that the data processing says that the level transformation of the received data processing output can give more information about the data input, or in short version, post-processing cannot increase information. And this means for each multi-step um, data analysis approach, you get a lot of information from one step to the other step, and so on. And finally, you get some analysis results, of course, but you haven't used all the information that would be available in Canada. This is what the API means. And um, we hope at least that with visualization approaches or more sophisticated with, with the analytics approaches, uh, we are able to see when we get a loss of our information in our data at, at which step of the analysis process we can go back and reanalyze the data and so on. And this is another uh, point why visualization could be useful for analyzing data. Or another point, causing for maybe motivation for the possible theory of clustering, which is from uh, another John, John Steinberg. Um, when we cluster data, so we want to find structure information in the data. It's not about the context, it's unfortunately again a clustering uh, a topic, but we are not talking about the context anymore, just about clustering. Um, then you can um, say, okay, I, I want to uh, for full three axioms of the first is uh, the clustering should be scale invariant. So when you scale the data and you apply the same clustering approach, let's say F, then you, you want to get the same clustering output. It works quite often for uniform scaling operations, but non uniform scaling operations, it's quite hard to find um, their clustering approaches that would give you the same clustering under uh, scaling operations in metric. <coughs> the second axiom is uh, richness, so for any given cluster, let's say C, there must be a distance function D in a way that a given clustering approach, again, our F, leads to this cluster C. This is a hard one. It means that you maybe decide, I have my data and I want to get this as one cluster in my data. So you need to look for a certain distance function that gives you the result of this is a cluster. I mean, you can design it, of course. 
But then maybe another cluster would, like, would look like different um, uh, with respect to um, the first one. Or you say I have uh, a novel point and add it this point to my data and I want also to get this point in the first cluster again. Uh, I find another distance measure and the clustering of the remaining data will be changed. So to find a quite stable clustering approach with respect to any structures with the richness problem is close to impossible. This means in reverse there could be structure information in your data where you're not able to find a certain distance pattern. And this means an automatic approach wouldn't give you this pattern. Which is. Our air yeah, consistency means items that have a smaller distance should belong to the same cluster more likely than items which have a larger distance. Um, and this is the impossible theory because it, it tells us that for data which have more than two um, dimensions, which are the most uh, we are talking about, there is no clustering function f that satisfies all three axioms of scaling variance, richness, and consistency. And the hope again is that visualization makes it possible to find structures in our data that are relevant with respect to the domain, but are not able to be found by certain automatic approaches. I hope you got it. And the last two <laughs> motivations, not problems. Um, data analysis should be for everyone. I mean, what, it, what, what, what happens when we are biologists? We have data, genomic data, something like that. We are interested in, in analyzing these data. We, we have to go to people who are familiar with statistics or with machine learning. But actually, you should analyze your data because you are the domain experts. Um, believe it or not, the most people are, are really not computer scientists. And this is a problem. Mm, not for us, but maybe for them. Because the domain expert is not an expert in data analysis. Uh, and an, an expert in data analysis is quite often a domain expert. You want to get insights in your domain. So it should be a good idea that uh, the domain expert is able to analyze the data. And this means you have to get access to the data anyhow without study mathematicians and stuff like that. And this is where visualizations come into the game. So visualization should be for everyone. And finally, the final motivation is to solve all the final issues. Quite often you have data with a lot of misvalues or the noise, uh, rate, the noise uh, uh, signal ratio is, is very bad, stuff like that. Uh, and the most uh, approaches will fail or give totally senseless uh, outcomes. And then you can use a visualization in order maybe to, yeah, to see a human being, a structure, very, very ambiguous structures maybe, or you can form at least some hypothesis, or you can finally decide, okay, the data crap, I will go to the Why not? It's okay. Um, but maybe you can work as a human being a bit better sometimes under certain uh, circumstances as uh, the computer can do to do some little defining issue. Okay. These are our motivations for visualization. Use the power of human perception system, automatic uh, methods with the context, so the context issue, data processing and quality, and uh, possibility theory and clustering. Data analysis for everyone and solve all the five issues. Okay. Who is not convinced that visualization could be useful? 